Shabbat Shalom, everybody. This is Rabbi Stephen with you, Rob Shemuel. Um, hope you're doing well. Hope you're enjoying the warmer weather. I certainly, I certainly am, depending on where you might be in the country or in the world. Um, I get notices that uh, you know people all over the world see my emails, they see my website, they see my uh, YouTube videos, and uh, I think that maybe not all of them are trying to be my web developer or something. So anyway, but if you're out there, thank you for looking, for, for listening and watching. I uh, really appreciate it. So um, here we are in the midst of <clears throat> counting the Omer. We just had Lagba Omer, the 33rd day of the Omer. You know, the Omer is considered to be a period of semi-mourning. I don't know if you folks realize that or know that, but you're not supposed to get married. You're not supposed to cut your hair. You're not supposed to have any joyous events because the bringing of the Omer of barley, okay, that, you know, Omer is a unit of measure. And what were they measuring? The barley offering to the priests. And there are no priests. Well, we have Kohanim, we have Levites, but we don't have priests per se because we don't have a temple. And therefore, people are in a period of Sunday morning because we don't have a temple, so we can't offer grain to anybody. So, um, I'm going to give you my personal take on this. For me, it's a non-event, okay? Um, I don't believe in mourning where we don't need to mourn. Somebody dies, fine. Tisha B'Av, um, I kind of give in and I do it. But, you know, we Jews are prevailing. You know, we're succeeding in horrible conditions. Certainly, it, it doesn't compare to the period of the 1940s during the Holocaust, the time leading up to that when anti-Semitism was on the rise. We know that anti-Semitism now is on the rise, but we're dealing with it. But we have government law enforcement or agencies that are dealing with it. We are, people are taking action. Israel is prevailing against the host of enemies, not just the ones that are firing missiles at them for no whatever reason they want to conjure up, but also the fact that the UN is passing resolution after resolution. Now, I'm very hardcore when it comes to Israel. Um, yes, I believe in peace. I, I think that the Arab indigents that we refer to as Palestinians are give them a homeland. That's fine. Let them govern themselves. But key word, let them govern themselves. I don't understand if you're busy governing yourselves and building a country, how do you have time to create war? That's sapping resources. It doesn't make sense. So anyway, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to go there anymore. But anyway, the point is, is that we are prevailing. Um, and we're doing good, so I don't believe in mourning. Maybe we'll have a temple, maybe we won't. I'd like to think that we will. And when we do, I like to think it's going to be a big synagogue. Uh, I think we've been without offerings for so long. That was another time. That was in another epoch, if you will, another era. We don't do that. Now we do prayer. It's a different way of communicating with God. Um, and I'm just going to leave it there, okay? Anyway, uh, speaking of counting the Omer, we're coming up to Shavuot, and here at our synagogue, we will be doing, I will be leading both services, Friday morning and Saturday morning. Um, I'm going to be doing this going forward. I am going to be having services when there is a holiday, whether I'm the only one or whether we have a menu. Uh, firmly believe that. Okay, I apologize. I don't know what kind of kick I'm on today. Maybe too much coffee and sugar. I don't know. Anyway, we're starting a new book. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Let's talk about Bamidbar in the wilderness, um, known by the English name of Numbers. So the idea of saying Numbers refers to the fact that they're taking a census. And people in synagogues all over the world get up on a Saturday morning and they look out at the congregation. They say, hmm, do we have a minion so we can do our sanctifications? Let's see. Let's see how many people have. One, two, three. And we know that that's not right. We don't do that. Jews do not count people. Now, this is a rabbinic mandate. I don't know that there's any place in the Torah that says that you have you cannot count. I don't know that it's a negative commandment anywhere. But the rabbis have determined that since various places in the Torah, like here, how do they take a census? Everybody between the ages of 20 and 50 and every man, okay, this is about counting the people the men that are available to go to war, okay? And by everybody giving a half shekel, they count the half shekels and they presume that every single person has given a half shekel, no more, no less. 
know nothing, but everybody's given it. They count that. They know how many people they have. And the answer is 603,000, give or take. So that's how they know. Uh, if you're in a, if you're in a synagogue and how do you count? You ask everybody to hold up their siddurim. Let me count the siddurim. Okay. I don't know. You have some, some joker holding up two or three or whatever. Okay. Uh, somebody was here uh, as a guest from a college and he said, well, we have a rabbi. Let's see. We can't count, but you know, it looks like we got 10. So let's go ahead. So there are various ways to do that. But they do the counting and they want to know how many people, how many able-bodied men are available to go to war. And then they have them muster, muster that, you know, group uh, come to um, formation uh, in specific ways. You've got four, three tribe groupings, one for each point of the compass. Uh, if you hold my, if you hold the gun to my head, I could probably remember some of them. I know the first one is Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun. And they're paired uh, based on that. And those are banners, part of the colors of some of their individual uh, uh, crests, if you will. So um, then it talks about the Levites and what they're doing, and which, and there are three clans of the Levites, and the Levite clans line up uh, each clan with each group. And then I believe the Kohanim, uh, who are a separate uh, part of the Levites, they are the priests, of course, they line up with the tribe of Judah and Zebulon and, and Issachar. Uh, let's see, I think then you had Reuben, Simeon, somebody else, Dan, Asher, and maybe God, and whoever's left was in the last. So here's my take on this, okay? Okay, so we're taking stock of all the able-bodied men, 20 to 50 years of age, who can go to war, and we're naming, we're naming the heads of the tribes, the princes of the tribes that are taking the counts and who are organizing their specific tribe. So why do we do this? Why is that? Now, some people look at this and they say, see, this is the Torah is like a history book. And we're seeing the history because we're seeing the people that are involved in that. And, you know, while that's not not what well, that's not untrue that's not false to me the torah is something more it's not just the history of our people it's the history of judaism it's a history of our people becoming jewish developing this thing we call judaism going from some individual tribes the hebrew or somebody once told me and one of my uh, rabbis years ago said it was the Hiberu tribe uh the ebers you know from the other side and the guy named eber who was a one of the uh, offspring between like Noah and uh, and Abraham, uh, and we're, de we're we're descended from Eber. That's why we're called Hebrews, Eberers, Eberites, Hebrews. However you want to do it. Okay, so um, it's 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 how we became a tribe of Hebrews to becoming a holy people, being a light among nations. Maybe one of the reasons why we haven't had a temple in the last 2000 years is God's like, you know, you people, my people, my holy people, my people who are supposed to bring light through my commandments to the rest of the world need to be spread around. I mean, it's like the Levite cities. They didn't just stay in one place. They had cities all over the place in ancient Judea, ancient Israel, you know, because they were the teachers and everything. So we have to be the examples. And it is said that when a country is mean to us and persecutes us and oppresses us and kicks us out, that country ends up suffering because of the consequence. Look at Spain. Spain had a period of rampant anti-Semitism. They used to be, you know, the conquistadors, they used to be a world power. Now look at them. They're barely a blip, right? So, or some people can say, well, that's just the way things happen. Okay, believe what you will, right? But this is perhaps to give credibility to the fact that we did develop this system of personifying God's law to show the credibility, to name the people, to say, see, we're going through all this trouble to show you that this isn't a myth. It isn't that somebody sat down, created a religion and said, oh, let's make up a story. Let's create a history. I personally believe that all these people existed. I believe there was a King David. Some people say there weren't. There wasn't. Some people say that there's no evidence that there was a first temple. And now archaeologically, we're finding evidence that yes, indeed, there was. 
But if there wasn't, look at the detail. Look at the way they, they count all of the tribes. I mean, somebody would have to go through a lot of trouble to say, well, you know, the tribe of uh, Judah had, um, I, don't know, I think it was like 70,000. You know, Simeon had maybe 50. Dan had, you know, 45, whatever, whatever the, those numbers are. You know, and, and keep that consistent through the writing of the Torah. So for me, the whole idea of this census is to say, look, this is real. Everything that follows this, all the commandments that we're discussing, all the events that are, al that are uh, uh, allegories, that, that, are, that are lessons to us now, this is why we go through this. So consider that as we go through the Torah. Consider that as we observe the festivals and the holidays. We're not just doing it because, you know, we, we think we're more righteous than people. We're doing it because we want to create a standard of living, a standard of morality and integrity for the rest of the world. Somebody has to take the lead. And sometimes, yes, we get a press for it. But you know what? We're prevailing because I believe God's on our side. OK. All right. That's my pep talk for the week. Shabbat shalom. Enjoy. Um, and thank you once again for listening.